Same thing as last time. We'll go from the left to right. We're live. We're live. Thank you very much, uh, Maryz. Good evening, everyone. Bonsoir tout le monde. Welcome to our uh, next edition of a virtual council meeting. We'll get the meeting started with a roll call. I'll ask all members of council to uh, just state their name for the record. Uh, Mike, Ternos Mike Ternoski, present. Uh, Bersant, present. Jamie Lauren. Councillor Associate is present as well. Yes, my mic is on. Yes. It is now, yeah, perfect. Thank you. So all members of council are present. Uh, we'll begin with the uh, item A under 1A is uh, suspensions for the rules of procedure. Motion that council suspends the rules of procedure to amend council's rules of procedure to remove items two and three, item two being prayer and three the national anthem from the agenda since the meeting will be held by electronic participation. So moved by Conseiller Lorrain, seconded by Conseiller Brisson. You guys are okay with that? Yep. Yeah. Wait. Okay. All those in favor? Yes. Wait. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So everyone's in favor. The motion is carried. Uh, number two and three now being removed. We'll move on to item four, additions, deletions, or amendments. Under section 18A, under Councillor Saucier, we will have, uh, she wants to speak about waste yard pickup. Under item 18B, under Councillor Saucier for Earth Day of April 22nd. And under 18C for Councillor Saucier, construction waste. Anything to add from other members of council? No, thank you. No? Okay. No. Hearing none. So we'll move on to the adoption of the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda as amended. Moved by Councillor Tonoski, seconded by Councillor Associate. You guys are okay with that? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Call for the vote. All those in favor? We. Yeah. We. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. Carried. Item six, disclosure of pecuniary interest. No. None. Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on to the next item. Uh, L'adoption des procès verbaux. Motion d'approuver les procès verbaux tels que présentés. Les procès verbaux de la séance ordinaire du 6 avril 2020. Puis le procès verbaux de la séance extraordinaire du conseil du 2 avril 2020. Uh, Proposé par M. Brisson, appuyé par M. Larin. Question? No, c'est correct. C'est bon. OK, here are no questions. All those in favor? Oui. Oui. Yep. Yes. Carried. Item 8, presentations, we have none. Item 9, délégation, pétition, on n'a pas. Item 10, consent items. Uh, motion that all items listed under consent items be received as presented. Item B or item A, minutes of the United Counties of Prescott Russell, February 26, 2020. Item B, liste des comptes pour mars 2020. Item C, procès verbal du conseil d'administration de la bibliothèque publique du canton de Russell du 13 février 2020. Proposé par conseiller associé. Uh, appuyé par Conseiller Brisson. All those in favor? Oui. Oui. Yep. Yes. Perfect. It is carried. We'll now move on to item 11, reports from departments and council committees. Item A, authorization to execute a subdivision agreement, report PD31-2020. Alicor Developments Inc, south of Dune Street, for a parcel of land legally described as part of Lot 15, Concession 10, being Part 1 on 50R-9875 in the village of Limoges for 12 residential lots. And the resolution reads that Council receives report PD 31 2020, dated April 20, 2020, and that Council adopts the bylaw to authorize the Mayor and Clerk to execute and affix the corporate seal 
to a subdivision agreement between Elacor Developments, Inc. and the Corporation of the Township of Russell for a parcel land legally described as part of Lot 15, Concession 10, being Part 1 on Plan 50R-9875, situated south of Dune Street in the village of Limoges. Monsieur le Duc, uh, Madame Tremblay. Donc, bonsoir. Euh, je pense que Monsieur le Duc voulait euh, entamer ce, ce dossier-là. Euh, allô? Monsieur le Duc? Oui, allô. Désolé, derrière technique. Uh, merci, bonsoir, membre du conseil. Um, J'ai demandé ce rapport soit modifié. Uh, the reason for that is that um, we had prepared this report last Wednesday. And uh, as you know, when I sign a report, whatever is presented, uh, I agree with the content. I had signed that, uh, that report last Wednesday with the assumption that the developer uh, was supposed to submit line of credit or letter of credit and other documents for this to be submitted. Normally, when we, we submit a report to council, uh, it's supposed to say that all conditions have been met by the developer. And in this case, uh, it has not been done yet. However, we are recommending a, a change in, a, in the recommendation that uh, the mayor and the clerk still proceed to sign a subdivision agreement once uh, as some documentation and letter of credit has been submitted. So that's why I want to, to tell council, that's why I've asked for an amendment to this report, because circumstances were that uh, Documents that were supposed to be submitted have not been submitted in time for this council meeting. Okay. Merci, uh, Monsieur Le Duc. Uh, questions? I have one, if you don't mind. Yeah, Councillor Lorrain. So, when you say documents haven't been submitted, can I assume that's the letter of credit that we're talking about? Or are there other documents that haven't been submitted? Madame Tablet. Uh, so, the... Um, the documents that were not uh, submitted are the letter of credit and there is a cash in euro of Parkland, uh, which is the 5% in uh, money. Okay, so this so this um, subdivision agreement has a cash in lieu component. Yeah, correct. So so there's cash. So the so the cash and the line of credit haven't or the letter of credit have not been provided as of yet. Those are the two documents that we're talking about. Yes, and um, I just want to make sure that councils understand that the um, uh, amendment, I don't know if it was provided, that I think uh, Joanne did uh, republish the agenda and there was a revised recommendation. And the revised recommendation was that council uh, approve the bylaw um, to authorize the mayor and the, the clerk to sign the agreement only once we receive the, uh, the letter of credit and the uh, 5% as identified in the condition of the draft approval. Which basically just means, uh, sorry, can I just continue with this? Yeah, Conseil Lorrain. Which basically just means that council, this doesn't have to come back to council or wait for a council meeting if we approve this. Just once everything is up and running again, that the proponent, so Elicord in this circumstance, pays, provides the letter of credit, pays the cash in lieu, then sets a meeting to have everything signed and whatnot prior to that. And we don't sign until we have those two documents or that cash and those documents. This just kind of is, you know, gets gets everything ready for when we're uh, when when we're ready to issue building permits again, based on whatever COVID nineteen finishes, and and they allow us to keep going. Is that? My accurate understanding. Madame Tremblay, uh, yeah, so you're correct. Uh, it's the only uh, usually when we bring a re this type of report to council is to confirm that all the conditions have been met. And now we're just identifying that we're missing those two conditions and that we're not going to recommend to the clerk and the mayor to sign those agreements prior to receiving those documents. Right. OK, I'm I'm, I'm absolutely fine with the, the way the recommendation is. I think the proponent is fine with that as well. Um, you know, understanding that they can't move forward with the building permit request at this time, I think it's just I think it's acceptable in my opinion, the way it's the way it's being recommended today. 
Thank you very much, Conseil Lorrain. So just to confirm, in case you're like me and had the previous agenda printed out, the addition is that uh, at the end of the recommendation, this approval shall be conditional to receiving the following. One, letter of credit of 50% of the estimated cost, and two, 5% of the value of land being part of the plan of subdivision be paid to the township of Russell. That's correct, uh, Madame Tremblay? Yes, those are the two conditions that are missing for us to uh, sign the agreement. Okay, perfect. Any further questions from members of council? Hearing none, anything I else? I have one, Mr. Mr. Mayor, is Joanne, the clerk? Yes. I just wanted to uh, make sure because Dominic said I had uh, republished the agenda with the revised recommendation. It was not republished because it was just before the meeting but all council members and staff received a copy by email. And that's what just uh, Ms. Tremblay mentioned was exactly the addition to the recommendation. Okay, so when this item goes before, uh, uh, when it's time to vote on this, we'll have to separate this item, add the actual amendment uh, as indicated in the email. So this will need to be uh, voted on separately, correct? Or it can be approved as the PD31A instead because that's what it is now with the revision. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much for the clarification. Any other question? Anything else to add from the administration? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next item. Item uh, B, uh, proposed community video conference for the Heritage Conservation District Study Verbal Report PD2020. I believe this is uh, through you, Monsieur Le Duc, Madame Tremblay. Uh, yes, um, so again, this uh, report was uh, put on the agenda before the legislation was uh, changed at the end of uh, this uh, last week. So since the legislation uh, changed to allow planning act re uh, application to be reviewed and heard by committees uh, under um, virtual meetings, the same as what we're doing with the uh, council meeting. The changes to the Planning Act regulation allow now to proceed with a virtual meeting. Uh, however, I just wanted to inform council that uh, to uh, let them know of our intention of how we're going to, we wish to proceed with this file. So the Heritage District, as you know, has been uh, on their radar for, uh, I would say, five years now. Uh, Council, as the 2019 budget allowed the administration to proceed with this file and to move forward, uh, we uh, gave the contract to the consultant MTBA. Uh, at the beginning of this year, we approved a schedule of the timeline that was proposed by the consultant and in order to, for us to proceed and maintain that schedule as approved. Uh, we're suggesting to have our first public meeting uh, for information purposes only uh, to virtual um, uh, presentation. So I had a lot of discussion with the consultant that um, is providing us with the information on how they're going to proceed with the uh, public meeting. So basically right now our contract with MTBA is planning to have two public meetings. The one was uh, beginning of April, the one that was initially uh, scheduled, and the second one was uh, toward the end of May. Um, and there's also uh, approval by council that would uh, subsequently be done after those public meetings. The public meeting that we're talking about right now are not regulated, so it's just basically to provide information to the public and make sure that uh, they are agreeable and um, they, they agree with what's being proposed and obviously to get their feedback and involve the public as much as possible. Um, so as you know, with the COVID-19 distancing requirement, the consultant is recommending to proceed with that first public meeting uh, using an internet-based video conferencing. Uh, they're uh, looking at purchasing a new platform under uh, Zoom that would allow up to uh, 100 people, 100 people uh, to participate, uh, which is more than sufficient in this case, since as we know that the, uh, I would say, last uh, five or six public meeting that we had a max of about 20 residents. 
So since we had a lot of public meetings prior to uh, this project moving forward, we know about um, the number of people that are attending usually. So it's a good uh, threshold for us to know if it's something that we move forward with to see if it's successful and measure our, our rate uh, based on the number of people that usually attend. And like I mentioned earlier, the this public meeting is not regulatory. So basically, if we feel that uh, the number of people that are attending is not enough, there's nothing providing us, uh, preventing us to move forward with another public meeting. So uh, basically, we're here in front of council tonight to um, um, ask council members of council if they're comfortable. If we are testing, basically, uh, we're willing to share the information uh, with the public before. And just to reassure members of council that since we started that project, we had a lot of um, involvement from the public. And we are uh, we started from the beginning a list of people that are interested in receiving all of the communication that we have with the consultant concerning this file. And we also have uh, our web page that is uh, uh, updated regularly uh, about the information that is provided by the consultant. So we are pretty close with the people that are involved and that are part of the district. So we have all of their emails and phone numbers. So we feel that it's it would be easy for us to reach them and, and reach the population at large. And based on the fact that we have a lot of more time at, at home, um, we feel that maybe we'll have more interest of people that, that could be involved in the project. So based on the number that we had previously, we'll be able to compare, like I mentioned, if this is a success or not. And I'm uh, providing counsel with reassurance that if it's not successful, then I'm committing myself um, to uh, ask the consultant to start over that public meeting number one once everything is, is settled. So um, basically that was the intent of the report. Um, I think we're going to see more and more of those types of meetings happening in the future, not knowing exactly when this situation will, will settle. Um, and I just want to make sure that the platform as well that um, that we're going to use, that the uh, consultant is really um, used to use that platform, so it's not going to be their first time. People are going to be able to either register in advance to ask questions in advance or ask questions while we're uh, moving the public presentation. And the public presentation is going to be done through a um, voice uh, recording and as well a PowerPoint. So all the information will be provided in advance. So we feel that it's a good way of the keeping people busy and uh, maybe they're going to show interest um, to this type of project that they didn't show interest before. And like I mentioned, uh, we're open to hold another public meeting if, if we feel that this is not successful. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Madame Trabli. Questions uh, from members of Council? I have a question. Councillor Tanoski. Uh, Madame Tremblay, juste pour confirmer, alors ça, ça va, ça va se passer au mois d'avril en quelque part. Est-ce qu'on garde le même uh, timeline pour les réunions? Donc, la, la réunion était, était supposée être prévue au début d'avril. Donc, ce que j'ai proposé aux consultants, c'est d'avoir un minimum de 20 jours avant l'annonce de la rencontre. Donc, on n'a pas déterminé encore la date. Euh, devrait, qu on, de, on voulait avoir un, un peu le feedback des membres du conseil pour voir si vous étiez confortable qu'on procède de cette façon-là pour tester la première réunion publique. Euh, si tel était le cas aujourd'hui, à ce moment-là, on pourrait déterminer euh, une date, mais laisser au moins euh, un bon 20 à 30 jours avant de faire la rencontre. OK. Fait que, fait que, que ce soit virtuel ou pas, on continue avec l'idée d'avoir deux réunions. Et puis après ça, ça revient au conseil. Puis moi, ce que je dirais, le Zoom, c'est super bon. Nous autres, on a des réunions quasiment tous les jours avec quasiment une centaine de personnes. Fait que ça se fait. Puis, euh, good. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Janowski. Any other questions from members of council? Hearing none, uh, Madame Trabli, council has been informed. Therefore, I, uh, I invite you to uh, work out that date with the uh, with the consultant and uh, advise council and the public when the meeting will be held. 
Yes, I will uh, inform council and send you the invite and uh, make sure that it's uh, well in advance so people could uh, make sure they're available to attend. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, prochain item, uh, attente de financement pour les fonds dédiés à la taxe sur l'essence, rapport FS07-2020. Que le conseil reçoit le rapport FS07-2020, daté du 20 avril 2020, et que le règlement proposé soit adapté tel que présenté, autorisant le maire et le trésorier à conclure une entente entre la municipalité de Russell et la province de l'Ontario, connexe à l'engagement financier pris par la province de l'Ontario, avec la municipalité dans le cadre du fonds dédié à la taxe sur l'essence pour le programme de transport en commun de la municipalité de Russell. Uh, questions, commentaires, membres du conseil? Questions, comments for members of council on the dedicated gas tax funding agreement? Hearing no questions, anything to add from the administration? Non, merci, Monsieur Maire. Non, parfait, Monsieur Godin, merci. Okay, we'll move on to the next item. Item D, summary of sponsorship, advertising, and donation for 2019, report FS08-2020. That council receives report FS08-2020, dated April 20th, 2020, for information purposes. Questions, comments, members of council? I have a question. Councilor Tarnowski. So first of all, thank you for for that information. It's very, very good. It's somewhat unrelated in the sense that I was just wondering, uh, Monsieur Gaudin, and I'm assuming we're already now planning for the impact of COVID-19 on the 2020 budget pertaining to all of these elements, right? Um, through Mr. Mayor, bonsoir, uh, Chambre Conseil. That's correct. So we, we are uh, currently preparing estimates of the COVID-19 impacts on the budget, and uh, uh, for sure, some advertising and uh, sponsorship uh, will be impacted by those for 2020. Yes. Okay. What's what what kind of timeline are we looking at in terms of starting to see some numbers or some kind of different scenarios? Through Mr. Mayor. So to start off, uh, the finance department just prepared some preliminary numbers, uh, which were just uh, finalized today. And uh, we'll be working with the other departments just to re refine those numbers to make sure uh, we didn't miss anything. And I would expect to have something to council at the next council meeting, uh, next regular council meeting for uh, May 4th. Excellent. Uh, in order to, to brief you on that. Merci beaucoup. Perfect. Thank you for a uh, question, Councillor Tomaski. Any other questions, members of council? Anything else to add, Mr. Godin? Uh, no, merci. Perfect. We'll move on to the next item. Item E, Grant Applications Report uh, 2019 Q4, Report FS09-2020. The Council receives Report FS09-2020, dated April 20th, 2020, for information purposes. Questions, comments, members of Council? Hearing none, anything to add from the Administration? Namaste. No, okay, we'll move on to the next item. Uh, item F, summary des dépenses allouées pour soumission de l'ordre de 25 000, rapport FS 10-020. Que le conseil reçoit le rapport FS 10-2020, daté du 20 avril 2020, à titre d'information. Questions, commentaires, uh, membres du conseil? Hearing none, anything to add from the administration? Euh, merci, Monsieur Maire. Euh, non, donc juste pour euh, résumer, ça c'était tous les, les rapports trimestriels pour le quatrième quart de 2000, euh, 2019. Euh, vous allez remarquer, on n'a pas encore présenté les, 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 les rapports, le rapport financier comme tel, puis les états financiers. Euh, mais avec la situation de COVID, puis euh, le travail de la maison, l'audit euh, financier a aussi fait, euh, a été fait à distance. Euh, donc le, le, les états financiers, puis le rapport financier final devrait être présenté à la prochaine rencontre là, le, le 4 mai. Parfait. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Godin. We'll move on to the next item. Item G, penalty on invoicing of municipal taxes and invoicing of water and sewer, FS 11-2020. The Council receives report FS 11-2020, dated April 20th, 2020, and maintains the bylaw approved on April 2nd, 2020, without offering interest exemptions for arrears before January 1st, 2020. Questions, comments, members of Council? I have a quick question. Yeah, Conseil Lorrain. So just to 
so in the financial implications, it says the arrears for the years 2016 to 2019 are presently around 1.1 million. The penalty amount charged at the beginning of April 2020 for these arrears is about just over 14,000. Now, is that 14,000 every month? Or is that just, that's the amount that we bill at, the, at once a year? Thank you, Conseil Lorrain. Monsieur Godin? Uh, through Mr. Mayor, so Councilor Lauren, to answer your question, that's that's really the monthly amount that would be charged on the $1.1 million in arrears. Um, so in other words, if we were to go forward with the extreme, which would be to, to completely uh, exempt the, the interest, that's the monthly cost that we could be uh, potentially looking at. So three months, so a three month, a three month deferral or a three month cease in interest application would be about 45,000. That's correct. And when when somebody pays their arrears, how is that payment allocated between or between um, interest and the actual taxes that they owe? Uh, so the payments are are allocated to the the taxes that they owe to to start with, and and just to clarify as well, just to, to inform council that fourteen thousand dollars. So the the accounts that were in arrears uh, prior to twenty twenty. Um, the current taxes on those accounts have still been exempt, so we're, we're not charging interest on uh, on 2020 taxes, uh, even for for clients that are in arrears. Right. I'm just trying to determine when we say we're going to lose fifteen thousand dollars. Now that's just that's that's forty. That would be if we did it for three months. That's forty five thousand at some point down the road. It's not. We're losing fifteen thousand a month in actual revenue because any revenue that comes in on those accounts are paid taxes first, interest last. So assuming they're not paying the entire amount of their of the tax arrears, then we would only be losing whatever whenever they get to paying that actual interest. So that could be uh, six months down the road. That could be two years down the road. It's just it's at that point where they make that final payment which has all of the interest costs included in it is when we would actually start losing revenue. Right. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So um, so technically we, we do lose revenues every month that we do apply this in the sense that so what you're saying is is uh, is true for for clients who are currently have payment arrangements, so who do payments every month. Uh, their arrears prior to 2020 do go down, so that $14,000 it can't go up. It's going to be going down as we as we collect some uh, some funds from those clients. Um, that being said, those outstanding amounts at the end of each month are charged at 1.25%. Um, so so those amounts are added to the to the um, to the cost, right? And our budget um, our budget does count on to about $250,000 in, in interest revenue. So that $250,000 is currently being brought down by that uh, roughly uh, six to $9,000 of, uh, of interest that we're not collecting on other like on current arrears. But um, but there still is, I mean, for for April specifically, that's the number that was that was allocated to that number um, or to that, uh, that exemption. But but uh, moving forward, for sure, that number would be going down a bit. So it would be maybe more before, between $35,000 and $42,000 for, for me, for example. So just for clarification, so in essence, we're everybody's getting a break for the 2020 tax year, but anybody who was already in arrears, well, they're not getting a break on the amount they were already in arrears, but they are getting a break for the same as everybody else in the year taxation year of 2020. That's correct. Conseil Lorrain. Yeah, and I and I mean I'm I'm fine with the fact that we've exempted the 2020, and if we're not looking to exempt the 20 the 2016 to 2019 as an example, uh, tax arrears. I just try to understand what that monthly actual impact is, and I can't say that it's fifteen thousand a month. That's what we build. Fifteen thousand a month of interest on that amount. But that's not what we receive in that month of interest. If they're not pay, if they're because if I get billed interest, I'm not necessarily paying that full amount that for that month. So we're not actually getting that money in that month. We will get it as an overall compilation of what that person owes, but we're not getting it in that month specifically. So now whether 
the difference is whether we accrue that interest or not on that file, right? That means at some point in time down the road, we're going to lose $45,000. But that doesn't necessarily mean in April we would lose we would lose 15,000 and in May, we just lose the ability to accrue it over time. So it'll be paid at some point in time. It's not being paid in that specific month, right? Like when I get a credit card bill and I get charged interest and I make a, I make my, my payment on, on the account, I'm not, if I don't pay it in full, well, you're not actually seeing the interest being paid at that point in time unless you're allocating a piece of each one of those payments to principal and interest and principal i'm saying is taxes and the interest so i still think for me at least i'm missing the actual revenue we're we're, we're losing in that specific month versus the revenue that we're going to lose over time because we build that interest so to me we're not losing fifteen thousand in april we're losing the ability to bill fifteen thousand dollars in April if we chose to to defer any tax, any interest on those previous years. So, so Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Ledick. I think two, there's two different things here. One is that our cat, you're correct as far as our cash flow, and probably Shaw can confirm that. Mr. Gannick can confirm that from the cash flow perspective, you're not getting the money, but even if money is, is not being paid out, there's a receivable written there uh, on top of the account that says you're owed that money. So it's accounted for in this year's budget. It's supposed to be paid at one point in time, you're correct from the cash flow perspective, but that money is uh, registered at the end of the month as an, an amount to be received. From general accounting practices. Yeah. And just to echo um, uh, Mr. Lizick's comment, so, so that's correct. So we the the impact here, like you said, there's no impact on our cash flow in the sense that maybe we wouldn't have collected that money, that, that $14,000 we wouldn't have collected now, but maybe later on down the road. But it is a revenue that's accounted for in the in the month of April. Um, and again, in the month of May, when we when we recharge that interest in, um, in May. Um, because we do accrual accounting, not uh, not cash based accounting. So even if we do collect it in 2021 or 2022, this is it's a revenue for 2020 that we're missing out on. That being said, like you said, though, the the cash flow impact is not going to be right right away because those clients um, potentially wouldn't, would not have paid that, that amount right away anyways. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mr. Gaudin. Any other questions, members of council? Yes, I have one. Councillor Sosier? Yeah, so I just want to uh, clarify, we're not going uh, prior to April, are we? For these arrears? No, no, so the, the arrears in 2019 and be, before, they're still paying interest. Right. But the first taxation for this year was only due in March. So at the last council meeting, we approved to defer that or to, okay. you know, yeah. It was still the same due date, but interest wasn't being applied till the end of May. OK, perfect. Thank you. Merci. Any other questions, members of council? Yeah, sorry, Jamie. Yeah, Just, that right? so and that included taxes and water and sewer. Or was that just taxes? Monsieur Godin? Yeah, through Ms. Mayor. So the bylaw we presented in um, in uh, on April second was um, specifically for taxes, but it does it does by default include water and sewer because uh, at every beginning of the year, um, all the arrears from water and sewer are transferred to the, to the tax roll. Um, so everybody's water and sewer accounts, if you will, are are even, and there won't be any interest charge on those since all the outstanding uh, bills from prior to January first were already transferred to the tax bill. Uh, so so to know? answer your question clearly, the, the water and sewer are getting the same treatment as the taxes here. Because I know that the tax bill that I received is due on the 20, 27th of April, if I'm not mistaken. So if somebody doesn't doesn't pay it on that date, then that fee, the, the late fee on that will not be applied. Correct? That's correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Anything else from the uh, council or the administration? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next item. Amen uh, amendment to the Traffic and Parking Bylaw Report PIC 02 2020. Uh, add a no parking area on the east side of Force Road on each side of the New York 
uh, Central Fitness Trail. Questions, comments, members of council? Um, I have one. Go ahead, Councillor Associate. Um, I think it's a really good idea just because a lot of people are parking on there, but I just wanted to also bring to everyone's attention. There is still no stop sign on the trail uh, coming from the new paved section. So when you come to it towards uh, that would be going east, going um, towards Forest Road. So a lot of people, I think, are not stopping there before they come out into the road. So I was just wondering that should probably be looked at also. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Associate. I'm sure staff are taking note and uh, they'll have a look at that. Any other questions, okay. members of council? Yes, I do, please. Councillor Ternoski. So I just wanted to confirm that we are just putting the no parking on the one side of that uh, road, correct? I think that's yes. the way it's explained, but I just wanted to be sure of that. Yes, that's, okay. that's the, uh, the intent. Okay, perfect. And I would agree with uh, Councillor Socia on that. That was my other point to make about the stop signs when you get to the to the road. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else to add from the administration on this one? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next item. Uh, item I, correction of information on the Smoke Tree Ontario Act report PIC 03-2020. The council receives report PIC 03-2020 dated April 20th, 2020, and approves changes to the bylaw 2019-145, regulating smoking and vaping on municipal properties. The administration recommends that smoking be permitted on specific properties at a distance of 10 meters of buildings. Questions, comments, members of council? I have one. Go ahead, Councillor Associate. Um, yeah, there was the uh, the recommendation about permitting it at uh, the town hall. Um, I saw some of the comments as well, but I was just wondering if we would consider only at the back instead of at the front, because there's still a lot of public has to come in to the building and, um, you know, just, I guess, the, the view as you're coming in. So, I don't know how anyone else feels about that, but. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Associate. Uh, anything from the administration on that uh, on that point? Uh, well, I wouldn't want the people coming into City Hall to come and smoke in the back, so. Right, because this is not just in relation to staff. This is anybody from the public that's coming to the building as well. Okay. Good point, Madame Bordeaux. I have a question. Uh, yeah, Councillor Tanaski. And what's the uh, impact of leaving it as status quo? Uh, the impact, Madame Bordeaux? Not allowing smoking at all? That's correct. So then, me sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. It just means that uh, people have to go off the property, so they go on the side of the road or to a neighboring property to smoke. That's what it means. So we 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 had moved into that. I know uh, for my particular personal example at the college, you're not allowed to smoke on property, so people have to go onto the road. Um, and it's fine. I guess I'm a non-smoker, so I I think it's fine. <laughs> but uh, but have there been a lot of complaints, Madame Bourbon? There hasn't been a lot of complaints. I know that uh, the complaints are mostly from other buildings, not City Hall itself. I haven't had a lot of complaints about City Hall itself. So, I mean, I'd be happy with status quo myself. Because this could be this could be as well municipal buildings where there's not necessarily any public that attend those buildings as well, and it's mostly for staff. Is that correct, Madame Bordeaux? Uh, yes, the other buildings is mostly uh, a staff, and we don't necessarily want them to walk onto a busy road to uh, to go smoke. So, if they smoke, we can do the same and put the make sure that they smoke in the back. Yeah, the first thing that comes to mind, for example, is uh, uh, the public works garage on Route 400. 
there's no sidewalk nearby. You don't necessarily want the staff to walk off the property standing on the road to have a smoke either. I mean, there's a health and safety there concern, if you will. Um, if we, if we could advise that it's at the back of the buildings, I think that's a that'd be a, a good compromise. Members of council, thoughts on there? If I may, Councillor uh, Charnowski. So my my only concern is mostly in the in the public area, so public buildings like arenas and stuff like that, so that it's because you know bringing it closer. I know at the entrance of the arenas, anywhere there's only one entrance. I think it's always problematic and I and I think that not having it close to the entrance if we can do something where you can either go off property or in the back of the property then I, I'd be okay with that. Okay any other questions? I see uh, Conseil Lorraine and Councillor Sosie. Yes. So I guess the buildings like the arenas are they what are they at right now 20 meters? It's it's 20 meters from the property line and that's under the uh, provincial regulation. It's not under our bylaw. So essentially they can't smoke on property of the arenas. That's right. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I guess I've seen I've seen quite a bit since someone who hangs around the arena quite often that uh, there's definitely people that are smoking around the arenas and, and whatnot. So um okay i just wanted to make sure that that was the case and for these for this exemption to 10 meters instead of 20 meters it's just for these one two three four five six buildings that we're recommending yes okay we can uh, yeah. we can remove city all if that's the wish the other uh, i just want to mention um, the signs are not all put up yet, so probably that's why you still, still see people smoking on the property. The yeah. health unit just provided us the signs uh, during the winter, so we haven't been able to install all the signs yet. Yeah, I think uh, I think if that's the case, then we may want to put something big up and let people know for next for the next season uh, that when the when the arena is open again that it's clear right from the start that it's not allowed and uh, that way there there's no surprises when if and when bylaw come around and start uh, issuing tickets so i'm assuming it would be bylaw that would issue those tickets mm -hmm. yeah e either either uh, us or a health unit uh, they have to back enforcement okay. yes okay excellent thank you thank you councillor Lorraine, and councillor Sosia. Um, yeah, I kind of, um, I guess I, I'm agreeing with Councillor Tanaski about this. Just, just, I'm hesitant about bringing it closer just because what I see now is still people are smoking pretty close to doors, even when there's 20 meter recommendation. So if we go 10, um, I'm just wondering if we're kind of causing more problems. Um, but I understand like the uh, garage on Route 400, I'd be fine with the uh, you know, just even having a designated area where where staff can go and where it's safe um, that they're not having to go out. It doesn't make sense that they're going near the road. So um, I, I'd be OK with that, but I'm still hesitant about making it closer. Yeah, just to confirm and the proposed buildings we're talking about is the public works garage and the salt shed on Route 400, the utility offices and garage on Route 400, the multi storage on Route 400. Uh, City Hall, the reservoir on Notre Dame, and the booster station on McDonald's. So these aren't areas that are necessarily, uh, you know, teeming with uh, public uh, going to these buildings. So this is mostly for for staff in this case. Um, so uh, unless there's somebody who really wants to propose something, I'm fine with what's being presented right now. Pierre. Oui, Conseiller Brisson. Oui, je vais me faire clarifier là parce que. Qu'est-ce que Madame Bordeaux disait que avec la chose de Health Unit, c'est 20 mètres même de la propriété et non du building. Ça fait que c'est vraiment là que tu es rendu, comme je prends l'exemple, surtout comme de la grande salle, quelqu'un qui, qui filme de la grande salle, faudrait il faudrait qu'il se rende quasiment à l'autre rue, l'autre bord de blais pour pouvoir, aller, pour pouvoir aller fumer, selon le Health Unit. Oui. Mais ici... Dans le rapport que s'est donné, c'est 10 mètres des bâtiments. Je sais que comme c'est là, ils ne respectent pas nécessairement même le 10 mètres. Ils sont rien que plus à 
tout bien 3 mètres, là, mais que 10 mètres, c'est quand même 30 pieds du building. Juste faire sûr que, que le monde réalise, autant conseiller euh, Laurent que conseiller Saussier, que ils, avant ça, c'est 20 mètres, mais de la propriété et non du building. Puis là, même, ils disent du building. Ça fait que moi, je n'aurais pas de problème non plus à 10 mètres du building, là, que quelqu'un qui est à la grande salle ou à l'aréna, euh, c'est au milieu du parking qui a le euh, fumer. Autrement, comme il a dit, c'est quasiment pas raisonnable, logiquement, de l'envoyer à l'autre rue pour aller fumer. Oui. Juste pour clarification, Madame Bordeaux, uh, these were rules, uh, the rules for 20 meters from the properties were implemented by the province? That's right. So we can't, we can't make them lesser than the province. So it has, we can't change that rule. Right, but in this case, we can make an adjustment here because because these buildings are not covered under the province. The buildings that are covered under the province are anything to do with recreation. Gotcha. Oh. So we don't, we can't, we have no flexibility in the existing ones that we did in regards to our bylaw not long ago. But these we do have flexibility because they're not under the provincial uh, mandated uh, information. Exactly. Okay. Perfect. Good. Thanks for the clarification. Merci, Monsieur Brisson. Um, any other questions, members of council? Anything else to add from the administration? I just want to make sure that I understand. Am I removing the city hall from the list? Uh, if if a member of council wants to remove it from the consent items and make that amendment, um, they may do so. Uh, obviously, again, the, the the issue with city hall is that you know we don't necessarily want to. If we say only smoking in back, how are you going to get people from the public really abiding by that? You know, I think if if we keep it at a, a, the signage at a distance, people will go on the sidewalk or they'll go on the side and not necessarily go on to neighboring properties to do so. But a member of council can uh, wish to remove the request, uh, the report if they wish to make an amendment at that time. Um, I, I would uh, prefer City Hall be exempt uh, from that. Um, just, uh, I, I think it makes sense that we're not encouraging all kinds of smoking in front of the building. Okay. Do we have any, uh, just for clarification, Madame Bordeaux, do we have any problems with smoking at City Hall right now? I'm not aware of any at the at this time, no. Okay, so, Conseiller So, can we say if we're if if we're mainly speaking about staff? I mean, I'm fine to leave it in, but I would also want to make sure that staff were smoking at the back and not at the front. So, I mean, people coming in. They get out of their car, they may have their cigarette, and then they put it out before they get into the building. I think we have a container there we used to, to so that they can put their butt in or whatever. Um, I mean, how are you going to stop somebody from doing that? I mean, I, other than throw it on the ground, and we don't want them to do that either when they get out of their cars. And I don't think Bylaw wants to run out and find, find people every time they get out of their car to come to City Hall, whether it's for Service Ontario or for City Hall. I think as long as we're encouraging our staff that if they do need to smoke, they smoke out back and not at the front, then I'm okay with leaving it in. If we're saying that that they can smoke out front, then I think that's a that to me is a problem. So I would want to make sure that that's yeah. that, that's that's how I see it. Um, Mr. Bear. Yeah, Councillor Sosa. I I would support that. I'm okay with that. I just okay. have a one question on that. Councillor Janowski. Uh, out in the back, there's a little picnic table, so that shouldn't be just for smokers. So if staff want to come out and they don't smoke, it shouldn't be an area where they're kind of forced to have to, you know, be around smokers if they don't want to be. So if we're going to do the back of the the back of the building, then fine, but it shouldn't be in that sitting area. It's my opinion. There right. should be well, maybe in the parking lot or at the 10 meter or whatever rule. That's it's, right. There's still a distance from the building itself, so. I think okay. it, it doesn't doesn't necessarily need to be a change in the wording of the actual recommendation. 
Uh, I think it's just how the direction is giving to staff where they can, you know, you're allowed 10 meters from the building at the back of the building. I think we're fine, Madame Bordeaux, you, you're comfortable just giving that direction? Yes, I don't see an issue. We can just put a bucket or something and they'll figure where that's where they're supposed to smoke. I don't think we have very many smokers either, so. Okay, perfect. Any other uh, questions on this report? Anything else to add? Mr. Meyer? Oui, Monsieur Leduc. Just to reassure Council, whenever we decide where it's going to be located, we'll just let Council know uh, by email where it's located. Perfect, thank you but very much. Far, rest assured it'll be far away from the picnic area. Okay, good to hear. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the next item. Item J, Public Safety and Enforcement Semi-Annual Activity Report, Report PIC 04-2020. The Council receives report PIC 04-2020, dated April 20th, 2020. Questions, comments, members of Council? Councillor Tanaski. I just had a question on, on the such a big variance. Why was there such a large variance? Is there like, like is, there, is the reporting process different or I'm just, I was just wondering. Is there any specific report here? There's many amendments or many attachments to the report. Is there any specific area you're discussing? Apologies, I was talking. I was referring refer, uh, referring to occurrences by city July 19 uh, to January 20th. Uh, occurrences by city. Just bringing it up, uh, Madame or. or Madame uh, Bordeaux, I'll let you explain this one. Okay, um, well, obviously we're, we're gonna have uh, a lot more occurrences in in uh, our major centers, which is Emberman uh, Russell. And then you see uh, Limoges has a higher number also, um, and Vars. The other yeah. ones, they come in, it's, um, it's example, a lost dog from a person living in Navin. They will call us because their dog might come our way. So we'll register it, but this will show up in the reports as one report coming from Navin. That's one example. OK, I get it. OK, OK. So it's not Navin's reporting. I think I asked this question maybe before and OK, I'm going to I'm going to be good at this by next year, I promise. <laughs> yeah, okay. but, but I think I remember now because so I, I believe that that was Navin's reporting numbers and there was such a variance. Yeah, it's not a comparison to all those other cities. It's where the actual call is coming okay. from. Madame Bordeaux, je m'excuse. Peut-être une ou deux autres fois encore, puis je vais l'avoir catché. <laughs> Juste une question. Oui, conseiller Brisson. Euh, je vois dans le rapport, il y a Russell mais avec les deux S que c'est le gros montant, mais juste au-dessus, il y a Russell avec juste un S qui a un K. Est-ce que c'était une erreur de frappe qui s'est passée? Oui, puis... oui c'est juste une erreur, de, sur le, le, une erreur d'orthographe sur le nom de la, de la ville, fait que ça a sorti par, comme qu'il y avait un rapport à cette ville-là, mais ça va avec l'autre. <rire> Okay. Parce que Russell, c'est ça, c'est le 1 de Russell avec un S devrait aller avec notre Russell. Ça devrait être 631, c'est ça. OK. Ça. OK. Ah, juste, euh, ouais. Parfait. Other questions? Um, yes. Councillor Saussier? Um, yeah, I was just curious, like, um, what is occurrences? Like, it's just everything all uh, that had happened through that uh, period? Like what, the 730 in Russell and the 885 in Ambran, what, what kind of occurrences were these? They're all everything that we do in a day's work. Oh, okay, so it's just one lump. I was just curious. I think, um, I'm not sure, uh, I'm trying to follow here on my tablet, so I'm sorry. If, uh, <laughs> but uh, I think that there is one that shows uh, which occurrences they are. I didn't see that. Well, there's a there's a pie chart by source yeah, and it says walk in phone online complaints. OK, so, OK, yeah, yeah. But to say what the actual um, actual call is in regards to whether it's dog bylaw or zoning or I'm not sure I see it here. Mm -hmm. I could provide that the next next uh, 
next report for the next uh, period, I could provide you one that shows what uh, what type of occurrences. Yeah, yes. I was just curious, you know, like um, it's not uh, cr critical or anything, but anytime you can get that, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Yes, I can, I can provide you with that. Perfect. Yeah, because obviously not every occurrence has the same level of, you know, importance. You're, you know, no. so. Okay, perfect. Merci beaucoup, Madame Bordeaux. Other questions, members of council? Hearing none. Anything else to add, uh, Madame Bordeaux? No. No. Okay, we'll move on to the next item. Item K: Noise bylaw exemption request. Uh, the Council receives report PIC 05-2020 dated April 20th, 2020 and approves as recommended in this report a noise bylaw exemption for the Russell Fair to accommodate the truck pool on Thursday, August 13th from 11 p.m. to midnight and the outside live entertainment on Friday and Saturday, August 14th and 15th from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, certified copy required. I think is this is pretty standard request every year. Um, I think I'll be ecstatic if it actually happens in August. Uh, but from my point of view, I don't think we have any issues uh, approving this. Any uh, questions or comments from members of council? Hearing none, anything to add to the report, Madame Bordeaux? No. Okay, perfect. We'll move on and we'll cross our fingers hoping that it actually goes through. Uh, next item is item L. Blue Box Transition Report ISPW 08-2020. Uh, that Council receives Report ISPW 08-2020 dated April 20th, 2020. And one, approves the transition to full producer as of January 1st, 2023. And that two, approves and forwards the attached resolution to MECP and AMO. Questions, comments, members of Council? Uh, Councilor Tarnowski? So I just want to confirm. So all we're doing here is we're just kind of saying we agree with it and just adding our name, our voice to it uh, in moving this forward because there is no actual uh, process established yet in doing that, correct? Because it'll probably end up being a, some sort of a tax at the end of the day, right? Okay. Uh, Monsieur Bourgon? Uh, merci, Monsieur Ma. Uh, so essentially, we know that the transition for the Blue Box program will happen during two, two, during a two year frame period. So between 2023 to 2025. So basically what the province is asking the municipality is when, uh, according with your different type of assets contract, will the municipality be ready to transfer uh, their recycling program to the, to the private side, to the producer in this case. So in our case, uh, with the, the contract that we just signed and we don't have any asset linked to our collection, we can proceed and move forward with that transition as soon as we can. It doesn't mean that it will necessarily happen at that time, uh, but at least we are ready and basically that's what the province are serving the municipality. It's to see who can do that transition and when. Perfect, follow up. Just a, just, yeah. Fait que ce que vous voulez dire, M. Bourgon, c'est si, mettons, on avait nous autres des, des camions qui ramassaient ça, puis ça nous coûtait, on avait du capital d'investi là-dedans, ça nous prendrait plus de temps à faire la transition. C'est ça? Bien, en, en, en autre mot, donc, si votre exemple est bon, si on aurait une, euh, nos camions, puis notre amortissement euh, de l'achat de ces camions-là se terminerait euh, en juin 2024. Donc, ça serait le temps que je recommanderais au, au conseil d'aller de l'avant, puisqu'on a déjà beaucoup d'argent investi dans ce programme-là. Euh, okay. Je connais certaines municipalités en Ontario qui ont leur propre centre de triage de recyclage, mais dans leur cas, eux, ils ne veulent pas nécessairement que ça arrive suite ou ils vont peut-être se porter volontaire pour faire la collecte pour euh, le, le secteur privé là, dans ce cas-là. OK, merci. Parfait, merci, euh, Councillor Tanaski. D'autres questions? Oui, Monsieur Leduc. Euh, oui. Euh... Councilor Taranski a, a fait un, un annoncé par rapport à est-ce qu'à la fin, ce serait une taxe. Il euh, faut dire que présentement, c'est un use of fee que nos citoyens payent. Euh, L'objectif à la fin de ce projet ici par la province, c'est que j'imagine que dans le prix de vente euh, des produits, que le producteur euh, 
récupère ses frais à ce, ce niveau-là, mais la municipalité ne soit plus responsable de collecter des fonds ou collecter des, des taxes pour payer les frais de recyclage. Dans le futur, ça ne serait plus à nous d'avoir ça dans nos livres, dans nos activités. So it's not going to be our, the township responsibility will now become a, 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 a manufacturer's responsibility of assuming the cost and residents will certainly be paying a portion of that through uh, the pricing of their products that they'll be, they'll be purchasing. So they will, we'll no longer have that in our books uh, as far as our responsibilities. Will that happen after this pandemic? That's the situation to be seen. Thank you very much, Monsieur Le Duc. Any other questions, members of council? Hearing none, anything else to add, Monsieur Bourgon? Euh, non, ce que Monsieur Le Duc a ajouté, là, ça complète euh, vraiment l'information au rapport. Parfait, merci beaucoup. Euh, on va aller au prochain item, mise à jour du programme de collecte de déchets, rapport ISPW 12-2020. Que le conseil reçoit le rapport ISPW 12-2020, daté du 20 avril 2020. Questions, commentaires, membres du conseil? Uh, anything to add to the report, uh, Monsieur Bourgo? Uh, no, uh, essentially, uh, this report just it adds to the information that was provided to Council uh, earlier this month. Uh, we will be postponing the large item pickup that should have occurred this week at a later date. Um, the leaf in yard uh, collection is maintained for uh, June 6. As of uh, today, GFL transfer station and just reopen uh, their services to take the leaf and yard uh, from the public. And, we, and last meeting, I also got questioned uh, regarding the tree giveaway that was supposed to happen with South Nation. Our last information, it will still happen later on later in May. Under uh, so resident will have to uh, order the the like do an order with South Nation and they'll either can select to get delivered to their place or they can do a curbside pickup uh, so that it's still to be uh, the finalized with South Nation, but that's going to be the, the way that uh, giveaway will happen. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you very much, Monsieur Bourgon. Question? Uh, yes, Councillor Saussier. Um, so I assume we'll be advertising that, that that program will be still available in May and then people can go ahead like through our website or what have you or Facebook page, social media. Yeah, once, once all the details are finalized, we'll definitely try and get out the uh, the word as much as possible. Okay, excellent. Okay, uh, Councillor Saussier. Uh, Vas-y, uh, Monsieur Brisson. OK. Excuse. C'était juste pour savoir, justement, pour la donation d'arbres, quand il a dit de passer la commande en ligne, est-ce que ça va être à la municipalité qui vont passer la commande en ligne ou à South Nation? Merci. Monsieur Bourgon? Euh, les demandes vont se faire euh, par l'entremise de South Nation. Donc, ils sont en train de finaliser le, le, le lien à leur site Web pour pouvoir euh, passer ces commandes-là. Puis là, il y a un nombre euh, spécifique d'arbres qui ont de disponibles puis de variétés, ça doit? Oui, c'est exact. Donc, euh, la com la, lorsque vous passez votre commande, je crois qu'ils euh, qu sont en train de planifier, des, ça va être des bundles de 10 arbres. Donc, vous allez avoir le choix là, lors de votre commande de quel type d'arbre vous voulez avoir. Mais il doit y avoir juste une certaine sélection d'arbres aussi qu'ils ont puis un certain nombre de disponibles total. Oui, oui, c'est exact. Il y a cinq ou six variétés d'arbres avec un nombre, je pense, c'est 500 arbres en tout qui est disponible okay. pour notre municipalité. OK, c'est parfait. Parfait, merci beaucoup, conseiller Brisson. Uh, Councilor Oh, uh, Yeah, I'll just, uh, well, come back to Councilor Sosia after. Go ahead, uh, conseiller Larin. Sorry, just a, just a quick note um, on, on something here. You, know, you mentioned that the large item pickup is cancelled for this week. Do we have any signs out there that are left that we can put out? I know we've used them all for stay home, but I do see items already out on the street uh, today when I went for my walk. So I don't know if that message is 100% out there other than social media, but anyone who doesn't have social media, is it on the sign out front of City Hall? I haven't driven by, so I don't know. But is it something that we can 
put around somewhere because I think that people may still think that there's the large item pickup this week. Thank you very much, Conseil Larin. Monsieur Bourgon, unfortunately, I, I think it's very difficult to get 100% notification out there, but do you guys have uh, any information? Uh, I know that we're, uh, the large sign in front of City Hall was used to uh, publish that message. Uh, we could actually, we could make um, the other signs available for a short period of time to advertise the cancellation of that, uh, that the, the large item uh, collection was cancelled. So we could remove the stay at home and put those signs up uh, this week. That's something that could be done. Perhaps, uh, perhaps on our arena signs as well. I'm not sure if we, what's the message right now, but uh, we know that those are very visible as well. It's it's something that I uh, can discuss uh, with uh, the rest of our staff and come up with try to maximize uh, the message uh, sent out there to our residents. Okay, perfect. Wait, Mr. Dudek. Uh, I guess yeah. I was gonna say we can add that to our tomorrow to our tomorrow's meeting uh, discussion regarding how can we uh, respond to that question raised by Councilor Dorgan. So we're trying to find ways of doing that. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Any other questions, members of council? Ouais, il va juste falloir réaliser qu'il va probablement avoir du monde qui vont être comme pas content justement parce que la notice n'avait pas été mis comme la semaine passée que Euh, que là, il y en a qui vont en avoir sorti, mais euh, c'est pour ça que ça devrait être fait aussitôt que possible, là, parce que c'était supposé oui. de commencer aujourd'hui. Oui, malheureusement, qu'est-ce qui arrive, c'est pas différence combien d'informations qu'on donnerait, il euh, y a du monde qui vont le manquer, le message. Oui, c'est ça. So, we'll, uh, we'll do our best and we'll have that further discussion tomorrow. Uh, I was just going to say, Councillor Saussier, uh, Monsieur Bourgon mentioned the waste yard pickup. That was one of your council member items. Uh, since we're already in the discussion, did you want to just speak to it now? Sure. Um, yeah, so I, I, what my question was, and because we had such an early spring, I mean, I'm really happy to hear the uh, transfer station is again receiving yard waste because I had quite a few calls about that. But uh, our date being June 6, I was just wondering if we were willing to entertain the idea of moving the curbside pickup to sometime in May. Um, and like I say, it was a very early spring. A lot of people being home have been working in the yards and I'm hearing people have like 15 bags that they're hanging on to. So I just don't know uh, what the other councillors feel about that, but I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you, Councillor Sosie. Um, I can say that it was it was part of the discussion at the, the administration roundtable. Uh, again, it's, it comes back similarly to the discussion we just had in regards to light dried and pickup, right? Even if we change the date, then yeah. if we do it earlier, then some people are going to be on June 6 with their bags out and upset at us that we didn't pick it up. Um, I took if if the transfer station had not reopened, then I think that we would have. Yeah. Really work at something, but the fact that they're open now, I think, gives us some flexibility. Uh, right. but, you know, or it's uh, members of council, do you have any thoughts on the matter? Oui. Uh, Conseil oui. Buisson? Oui, parce que pour les uh, yard uh, waste, je trouve le 6 de, jan de juin sur le bord tard. Je recommanderais même dans même une année normale, que ça soit plus au début de main, parce que c'est à peu près dans ce temps-là que le monde nettoie leur plate-bande, puis euh, ramasse les branches, puis ces choses-là. Ça fait c'est pour ça que je trouve personnellement le 6 très tard que ça pourrait être à chaque année plus bonheur, selon mon dire. Ok, merci pour ces brissons. Je pense que M. Bourgon est prêt à des notes. M. Bourgon. Euh, J'aimerais ajouter juste pour au point M. André Brisson. Si on se rappelle deux ans passés à, à ce temps ici, on était dans une crise de verglas. Juste mentionner au conseil que je crois que le 6 juin n'est pas nécessairement si tard que ça en temps normal. Ça dépend de l'année, évidemment. Monsieur Le Duc. Euh, membre du conseil, euh, cette date-là avait été était en mai dans, dans le passé, a été repoussée à la requête du conseil. Council did make the request to push back that date uh, before. 
Well, so now we have a, a very climate weather uh, the spring, but normally you've asked us to push it back because there were people were not ready. So again, it will vary. Uh, to change it, I think it'd be best to decide or discuss that at the budget discussion for next year so that now all the communication plans and documentation what? has been in, in the people's hands. So to change the date, I understand the need for this year, sure, sure, certainly, but the issue of communication will come back again, maybe forcing us to do a second pickup uh, later on with additional costs. Yeah, and I think I and the reality is as well is that uh, because of the current situation, a lot of people have done their yard work, but in normal times, they might not be doing it till May or end of May anyway. So it just, it's a, it's a perfect storm, if you will, for the issue at hand. Councillor Associate? Yeah, I, well, I when I originally wanted to bring this up, it was when th there was no place to take the uh, yard waste. So now that that's reopened, uh, I, you know, I think people are starting to take it there. So um, I don't have an issue with keeping it the same date. Okay, so, perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. But definitely something we can look at uh, during budget time for the discussions. Perfect. Any other uh, questions on this report? Okay, we'll move on to the next report. Uh, item N, Canteens Update, uh, Report PR08-2020. Uh, Council receives Report PR08-2020 dated April 2020 and approves one, to award the Ember Marina Canteen to Mr. Paul Capotier from the Hot Potato for an amount of $150 per month from May 1st, 2020 to April 30th, 2021. And two, to award the Russell Arena Canteen to Mr. Ron Laudry from Fry Me to the Moon for an amount of $150 per month from May 1st, 2020 to April 30th, 2021. Uh, obviously in the current situation, this would, uh, you know, we'd only start charging these amounts if they had access to the location. But uh, any questions from members of uh, council? Yes, please. Okay. You got it. Um, my question is, why is it May? Even in a even in a, a year that we're good, and like we have no COVID, it's not COVID nineteen and and everything like that. Both arenas are closed, and they both have chip stands. So why is it May and not? August or September as the opening date when the actual arena is open. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madame Guitar, I'm assuming it's just have a 12 month contract, is that? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, members of council. Uh, no, we had a request from both gentlemen uh, to be using the just a canteen storage, canteen space for storage for them um, for uh, in order to help them out with their um, their chip stand. So we said on, we were okay with that as long as they use the uh, the the facility and those during those four months from May to August just for storage. We're okay with that. And also it will be reflected also on their insurance certificate that uh, we are added as an additional insurance for those uh, four different months and they will be paying rent for those months. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Follow up, uh, Conseil Larin. Uh, I have a hard time with that one, but I mean, if no one else does, then you know I don't understand why we're we're charging them $150 a month in months that they can't use the use it to make money. I understand they're they're, they're maybe using some storage, but I mean $150. What does that really do for us? What does that really do for them? I guess is the other question. Like, is that really a cost that they're okay with? I'm assuming well, they are. Yeah. But I mean, let's remember they are this this line item was what between eighteen to twenty five thousand dollars a year for us in the negative every year. So I just I, I don't know. I, I just have a hard time with the made a August or whatever it made a July charging them rent. Um, I well, would I, say I would say no, but um, I think considering they asked for it, it's probably uh, alleviating them having to rent space somewhere else uh, to wherever, you know, because if they had the, if they didn't need the space, uh, they wouldn't be using it, right? So they need the space. So it's most likely that it's cheaper renting at $150 off us than it is actually renting the space somewhere else. So, but I understand your point. Um, any other member uh, questions for members of council? Yeah, just a clarification. Well, yeah, Councillor Tarnowski. 
Euh, Madame Guitar, juste confirmer, est-ce que c'est -ce est, est garanti que c'est juste pour du storage ou bien ils vont faire de la préparation de nourriture là? Et puis est-ce que ça fait une différence s'ils si, si faisaient ça? Madame Guitar? Merci, M. le maire, un petit conseil. Euh, je sais que M. Carpentier a mentionné que peut-être il ferait un peu de préparation de nourriture, mais il n'y aurait pas d'utilisation des, des fourneaux et ces choses-là. Euh, avec M. Monsieur, euh, monsieur Ron, il n'y a pas eu de, de mention de ça. Euh, puis on a, on a été clair qu'il n'y avait pas de vente qui se ferait là, euh, à l'extérieur. Il y a peut-être, euh, je sais que M. Monsieur, euh, monsieur Ron de, de Russell avait mentionné peut-être euh, essayer d'ouvrir le, le 1er juillet. Euh, ça, il faudra euh, faire des ententes avec euh, Ag Society parce que c'est vraiment eux qui font l'activité. À ce moment-là, on pourrait peut-être faire une exclusion, leur permettre, là, lui permettre d'ouvrir euh, s'il veut là, pour, euh, pour pouvoir offrir la nourriture aux gens s'il si, si désire. Mais définitivement, ça c'est des exclusions puis ces exclusions-là vont devoir être discutées avec, euh, avec le département. Parfait. D'autres questions? Quelque chose d'autre à ajouter, Mme Guitton? Non, ben, je pense que c'est bien que les, les, deux, euh, les deux commerces veulent revenir pour une autre année. Ça a bien été cette année. Malheureusement, ça s'est mal terminé pour eux parce qu'on euh, a dû fermer là, à partir du 13 mars, mais euh, ils ont été très compréhensifs et très coopératifs. Euh, puis c'est même eux qui, se sont, qui, qui, qui ont demandé à, à avoir pour le 1er mai. Ils étaient très voulants là, de... De, de continuer à payer leur, euh, leur bail. Donc, euh, on est content de, de cet outcome-là. Une Madame. question, euh, s'il vous plaît. Oui, conseiller Brisson. Mais là, avec le COVID, j'ai vu que les cantines sont ouvertes pareil à l'extérieur ou certaines cantines. Euh, Est-ce qu'ils vont pouvoir faire le storage parce que c'est juste les autres qui rentrent, que ce n'est pas dangereux pour le COVID quand même, qui pourraient utiliser l'entrée le, secondaire pour aller euh, à leur storage dans l'aréna? Oui, je pense pas que c'est un problème pour aller rentrer. Le... C'est vraiment, les arénas sont fermées à cause des, des places euh, publiques pour le monde, euh, mais du in and out, je veux dire, on a du staff qui, qui rentre et sort de là, so je pense pas que c'est un problème, Madame Picon. Merci, Monsieur le membre du conseil. Non, ça ne devrait pas être un problème. Et à ma connaissance, euh, je, je pense qu'ils ouvraient peut-être, euh, je ne sais pas si sont, si sont ouverts comme c'est là, là, les deux. Je sais que Mme Bourdeau nous a fait mention qu'il y avait certaines cantines mobiles qui avaient reçu leur permis d'opération. Euh, mais je ne suis pas au courant encore si euh, Fry Me To The Moon et euh, M. Carpentier en brun ont reçu les leurs. Euh, si oui, je n'ai pas eu encore la demande s'ils pouvaient accéder. Euh, au, euh, au local, mais je, je vois pas de problème parce que comme euh, M. Le Maire mentionne, euh, ils sont seuls dans cet endroit-là, il n'y a pas personne d'autre. Euh, les, les, les employés sont pas, euh, ils sont pas permis d'aller dans ces endroits-là parce que techniquement, c'est leur local à eux. Okay. Parfait. Merci beaucoup, Mme Guitard. Okay. Une autre euh, question. Oui, euh, juste savoir, oui, c'était savoir euh, les mois qui ont été formés de ce printemps, est-ce qu'ils ont été remboursés? Justement, les, euh, les personnes pour ces mois-là qui étaient fermées. Madame Guitard. Merci, Monsieur le maire, euh, membre du conseil. Oui, on leur a remboursé au prorata à partir du 14 mars et nous leur rembourserons également le mois d'avril. OK. Merci beaucoup. Any other questions, members of council? No. Anything else to add from the administration? Non, c'est tout. Parfait. Merci beaucoup, Madame Guitard. Uh, we will move on to the next item, item 12, reports from an investigator or the Budsman. Item A, Ontario Ombudsman's report uh, received April 17, 2020. The council receives the information purpose, receives for information purposes, the Ombudsman report dated April 2020, received by the clerk by email from the Ontario Ombudsman, Mr. Budsby, on April 17, 2020, with respect to an investigation into a complaint about a special council meeting held by the Township of Russell on April 2nd, 2020 by electronic participation. Questions or comments by members of council on this issue? Councillor Tarnowski. I just wanted to uh, congratulate the Township and the Mayor for keeping us on the proper side of this issue. Thank you very much. 
Anything else, members of council? Yeah, Jamie. Yeah, I just, you know, I just want to say that I'm, I'm, I'm happy that uh, the ombudsman did review this, and and it's really comprehensive when you look at it, the outcome of what he did, and you know, stating that the meeting that we had was in fact an actual uh, allowable meeting under these circumstances, and that we followed every precaution and, and measure that we could to uh, to ensure that the public was uh, was able to participate. Um, you know. It's uh, it's crazy that uh, that we've received a, a complaint on this when we're dealing with this situation at hand, uh, being the COVID-19 extenuating circumstances and pandemic, uh, that somebody would would have this issue uh, with us. So I'm just happy it was it was found that we were not in the in the wrong here. Yeah, thank you very much, Councillor uh, Lorraine. Yeah, I agree with you. It's a, it it is almost a little ridiculous when you when you know. We see what other municipalities are doing, and that we're going well beyond and doing everything in our in our means to make sure that we're doing things right. And uh, you know, there's always seems to be one somebody that takes offense to it and uh, makes a complaint. And you know, we know from uh, past numbers that these these complaints are very costly for the province and for something so frivolous as this. I I find it regrettable, but. It's nice to hear that they opened the investigation solely to make sure that uh, they wanted to highlight that we it was the first complaint on this issue with the new rules, and they wanted to highlight that we did everything properly. So I was glad to see that as well. Can uh, I just comment too? Yeah, Councillor Sosia. Yeah, uh, I'll be brief. I just you know I agree with what uh, the others are saying, and I you know I just want to congratulate everybody because it was also a steep learning curve, and it was our very first meeting. Um, electronically and I think it's to be expected there might be technical difficulties but we went above and beyond and, and open up question period where some aren't even having a question period so I think uh, we did due diligence so thank you staff who worked so hard to get these meetings online. Thank you very much Councillor Associate. yeah there was uh, for our, our administration our clerks department this has been a a, a uh, learn on the go if you will trial by fire and uh, they've done a fabulous job and uh, i think uh, even council has adapted very well to this type of meeting so congratulations to everybody involved um madame camille laflamme was there anything to add from your side uh hi mr mayor and council uh no um, um the report is very self-explanatory and we've uh produce all the information they requested and more and did more. And I also want to commend as not only the clerk department, but the uh, communication department, Megan and Debbie in IT, which uh, were very helpful to provide all the information. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you very much. All right, uh, we'll move on to the next item. Item 13, notice of motions. Uh, we have one procedural bylaw moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Ternoski. Uh, this will is just a notice of motion and discussion will happen at the next meeting on this, but I'll read it out. Uh, whereas our procedural bylaw under section 10.3.11 allows for a public question period on the meeting of the day. And whereas during a public meeting held in council chamber located at town hall, it is easy to see a member of the public come up to the lectern in order to pose a question. And whereas during electronic virtual meetings held during emergency situation, it is possible to see when guests anonymously are viewing our meeting. It is however quite impossible to verify whether they wish to ask a question or not. And whereas council still wishes to give members of the public an opportunity to ask questions, however, does not wish to have ombudsman complaints filed against them regarding question period not being available for members of the public due to unforeseen reasons. And whereas the current procedural bylaw does not address this potential situation, now therefore be it resolved that during electronic virtual meetings during this COVID-19 pandemic, or in future declared emergency, the question period on the meeting of the day may still be included in the agenda. However, given all possible issues and challenges already present under this form of meeting, it is not a requirement under the procedural bylaw to have a public question period. 
and further be it resolved that council members are still available via different communication methods to answer resident questions should they arise. And further be it resolved that council encourages residents to discuss their matters of importance with members of council if they so wish. And furthermore, be it resolved that during a council meeting held electronically, both the national anthem and the prayer are to be removed from the agenda. So that will be discussed at our next council meeting. We will move on to item 14, question period on the meeting of the day. Um, it has been open, uh, the question period has been open since the beginning of the meeting, I believe. Uh, therefore, we ask anyone who's interested in posing a question to please state your name and address for the record and ask your question. <coughs> Perhaps our administration can confirm if there's uh, any, wa any guests watching this meeting currently. Uh, there is one and there's no questions yet. Okay. So we will give it a minute. Uh, Councillor Larry. Yeah, I was going to I was just going to suggest that we put a some sort of a stopwatch or a timing, maybe a minute, minute and a half to let anybody type anything in. Uh, that way there we've given enough time for someone to, uh, to at least say I have a question. I'm just typing. Um, yeah, if the member who is watching, at least uh, just exactly just type in question coming. We know it's coming. If not, we'll give it a minute and uh, We'll see, uh, we'll move on if there's no questions at that point in time. We should make sure though for the next meeting at least we have Jeopardy music or something playing in the in the back. Okay. Well, it has been I believe a, a minute now, so we will. Uh, no questions have been asked. No indication of questions. Therefore, we will move on to the next item, which is item 15, resolutions. Item A. Motion that council approves all recommendations listed on the agenda under item 11, reports from departments and council committees. Uh, moved by Conseiller Larin, seconded by Conseiller Brisson. You guys okay with that? Yep, we. Okay. Call for the vote. All those in favor? We. We. Yep. Yeah. Councillor Associate still with us? Yes. Okay, all those me? against? Yeah, now we hear you. Yeah, so. il y en avait pas séparé, Pierre. Il y avait rien à séparer. No, uh, confirmation, Madame Camille Laflamme, we didn't uh, subtract anyone. We had discussion in regards to one for City Hall uh, for the smoking, but we decided to leave that one in. Okay. Non, c'est juste pas sûr. J'étais plus sûr là. The first one, didn't we have to separate uh, to say 31A or 3A or something? It will be, um, Mr. Mayor. I it will be noted in the minutes that it's now uh, PD 31A, and we'll just put as amended if uh, Council is okay with that. So unless they want to separate it completely, there's no need really for it. Right, with the addition okay. of the two the two yeah. clauses on the subdivision, it'll just be indicated it's as per report PD 31A. That's correct. Right, unless members of council want to be more specific and yank it out, but we, it can be part of the uh, the grouping. C'est correct, c'est à juste vérifier, Pierre. Right, great. So I'll call for the vote then. Uh, I did call for the vote, right? It was just Councillor Associate, you're okay with it? Yes. Okay, so anybody against? No one against, then item A is carried. Item Excuse me, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, there's one question right now, if uh, you can read it. Uh, let me just click here. 
Mr. Armstrong, 85 Castable, uh, question for 11A. How much is the 5% in dollars and will there be a park playground in this area? Monsieur uh, Godin or Madame Tremblay, do we have the answer on the 5%? So uh, good evening again. So the 5% is the value of the land uh, done by an appraisal, an appraiser, and it's the value of the land the day before the agreement is registered. And I, I don't have the amount uh, directly in front of me, but the, uh, the applicant needs to submit. Uh, he did submit an appraisal, and then it's going to be 5% of that, uh, that land value that will be requested. If I'm not mistaking, it's uh, close to three thousand or something like that. It's not a huge amount because we're not we're talking just about uh, twelve lots. Uh, as regard to the second part of the question for the parks, yes, it will. There's a there's going to be a park proposed, and it's going to be in phase two of that subdivision of uh, Oasis. Um, and Dune Street, so it's at the end uh, on the west side of the existing subdivision where there's uh, already 52 lots. All right, so just for clarification, why this <laughs> phase one exists now? There's yeah, there's a park, two late lots. Yeah, and, and there's a park in phase two of that subdivision, but yeah. that's literally across the street from these 12. These 12 are not considered a phase of that subdivision, correct? Correct. Okay, so there, 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 there will be a park across the street or within a, a close area as part of phase two of the OSS project. Perfect, yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. All right, we'll move on to item B. Uh, motion that council approve all recommendations listed on the agenda under item number 12, reports from an investigator or ombudsman. I need a uh, move by Councillor Ternoski, seconded by Councillor Saucier. You guys okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. We. Oui. Oui. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Anybody against? Hearing none. Carried. We'll move on to item 16. Motion uh, for bylaws. Motion that council approves bylaws 2020-46 to 2020-49 inclusively for first, second, and third reading as listed on the agenda. Moved by Councillor Lorrain, seconded by Conseiller Brisson. You guys okay with that? Oh, wait. Yep. Okay. Call for the yes. vote. All, all those in favor? Yes. Wait. Yep. Yes. Okay. Anyone against? Bylaws are carried. Item 17, new business reports. We have none. Item 18, other business, business presented by council members. Uh, Councillor Associate, we did item A already, so we'll go to item B, Earth Day for April 22nd. Yep, so I was just wanting to announce that Earth Day is April 22nd. It was established in 1970, so um, especially during this time right now, I hope everybody will uh, thank the Earth <laughs> for everything that uh, we are so fortunate to have. And uh, some of us are doing um, some letter cleanup, uh, using gloves, of course, and, and uh, pickers. So um, we're doing ED Road. Um, on that day. I, and I'm sorry, I just have to mention something personal. It's also my husband's 65th birthday. So if I didn't say that, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so in case he's listening, happy birthday, Mike. He's not. <laughs> uh, okay. I'll be on the record for him. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, the there was one other item, eh? Uh, yes, item uh, C. Well, I'll just ask if member council had any questions in regards to that item? No, pretty straightforward. So uh, next item, item C, Councillor Associate uh, Construction uh, Waste. Yeah, so I received a couple of phone calls um, of concern from um, people that have are living in uh, Russell Trails 
and they were talking about the amount of litter and garbage uh, that's flying around. It's been quite windy. Um, there's a lot of coffee cups and plastic water bottles and uh, aluminum cans and what have you. And, you know, I've been picking up a lot of that styrofoam. So they did speak to uh, John Corvinelli and, and he felt it was one of the other developers. So I'm just wondering, is there anything we can do to sort of uh, encourage these construction uh, groups to uh, to not just throw all their garbage all over the ground. Um, there's their lunch containers, everything. So it, it is quite, and when someone moves into a brand new house and having all that flying all over the place, it's a, a little discouraging. So I did receive a number of emails uh, this week. Thank you, Don Carew, uh, very much, Councillor Associate. I do know I was a uh, developer, did send an email, in regards to an email for staff, I'm not sure, Monsieur uh, Bourgon or somebody from the administration. I know I saw an email sent out in regards to this uh, issue. Do we have any uh, feedback from the administration on this one? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I can speak to that. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, it was actually earlier today that we did send out an email to all the subdivision builder to advise their own builder to to clean their site uh, and to try to minimize the amount of waste and garbage that's still out there. So, donc c'est un avertissement là qui est un avertissement ou une demande qui est envoyée à toutes les les différentes compagnies de 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 construction là qui est envoyée aujourd'hui. Okay, excellent. Merci, and I'll I'll uh, respond to the resident and let them know. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Sosie. Any other members of council uh, have comments in this regards? No, we've given notice and uh, hopefully uh, they'll, uh, they'll be able to uh, get uh, address that, uh, that concern themselves so that council or that our administration doesn't have to deal with it. They can take care of it themselves. All right, um, move on to the next item, item 19, public consultations and hearings. We have none. Item 20, closed session. Uh, motion to move into closed session at 7.38 p.m. Uh, to address matters pertaining to Section 239 of the Municipal Act 2001, SO 2001, Chapter 25 to consider matters relating to, one, purchase of land for relocation of St. Pierre Road for future roundabout, report CS05-2020, mm -hmm. under Section 2C, a proposal pending acquisition or disposition land by the municipality or local board. Item two, update on proposed acquisition of land in Embrum. Report CS06-2020 under section 2C, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition land by the municipality or local board. And item three, closed session minutes of special council meeting dated April 2nd, 2020, and regular council meeting dated April 6th, 2020. So just for members of the, the public to be aware, um, members of council along with the appropriate staff will be leaving this meeting. Uh, we'll be joining a closed session private meeting. Uh, once we were, our, and this meeting will continue, uh, I'll just essentially be continuing, but uh, nothing going on. And once we complete our closed session, we will come back to this meeting and uh, we will report uh, out of uh, closed session. That's correct, uh, Madame uh, Camille Laflamme. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. So at this point, I need a mover and a seconder to go into closed session. So moved by Councillor Sosier, seconded by Councillor Charnowski. You guys are okay with that? Yes. Councillor Sosier, you're okay with that? You're on mute right now. Yes. Okay, perfect. So uh, let's leave this meeting and then uh, we'll go into closed session and we'll be back afterwards. Thank yeah, you very much. Un vote, uh, Pierre? Oh yeah, I guess, sorry. Good call, uh, good catch, Conseiller Brisson. I have a mover and seconder. All those in favor to go to closed session? Mike? Oui. Wait. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, perfect. So we got everybody. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. Uh, let's go into closed session and we'll be back afterwards.
I think uh, all members of council have returned. I believe our clerk is back as well. Yes, I'm here. Okay, so uh, we will continue with the meeting. So the next item is to uh, report out of closed session. Okay, so we're back at 8.36 p.m. for the two first items. Um, Council was briefed on the subjects and two different motions will be presented for Council's consideration. And for the third one, the minutes uh, of the closed session meetings were deferred to the next closed session meeting. So I can proceed right now with the two motions, if you'd like. Yes, please, Madame Camille Lafayette. So for the first one, uh, that council proceeds with the agreement of purchase uh, between the Township of Russell and Bostar Farms, Inc. and adopts the bylaw authorizing the mayor and the clerk to sign the documents for the purchase of land. The motion that council approves bylaw 2020-050 for first, second and third reading as follows. Bylaw 2020. 2020-050 being a bylaw for the purchase of land from Bowster Farms Inc. Inc. for $69,552. Okay, that's the end of the bylaw? Uh, yes. Okay, so, so I'll, uh, need, I'll need a mover and a seconder, so moved by Councillor Trunoski, seconded by Conseiller Lorraine. Uh, you guys okay with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Any, okay. Any questions on uh, on that file? Hearing none, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Yes. We. Oui. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Anybody against? Carried. Thank you very much. Uh, move on to the next one, Madame Camille Laflamme. Yes. Uh, the council proceeds uh, with the purchase of the property at 225 Industrial State Street in Embrim and adopts a bylaw authorizing the mayor and the clerk to sign the documents for the purchase of the property. So the motion that council approves bylaw 2020-051 for first, second and third reading as follows, being a bylaw for the purchase of the property located at 225 Industrial Street in Ambrun for 325,632 cents. No, six, 325 and 632 and zero cents, <laughs> including the HST non refundable portion uh, of 1.76%. Okay, thank you very much. Moved by uh, Conseiller Associé, seconded by Conseiller Brisson. You guys okay with that? Yes. Wait. Perfect. It's on the table. Any questions? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Yes. Wait. Yeah. Yes. Anyone opposed? Hearing none, the item is carried. Um, Madame Camille Laflamme, we didn't have to pass anything for the deferral of the minutes, eh? Uh, no, I just mentioned that they are deferred to next meeting. Okay, perfect. So we'll move on to the next item is the confirming bylaw. That bylaw 2020-052. Uh, Mr. Mayor, there's the next meeting first. The next meeting. Oh, no, sorry, you're right. I'm wrong. <laughs> Go ahead. It will be 2020-052. <laughs> okay, yeah. That bylaw 2020-052 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation at Township of Russell at its regular council meeting held on April 20th, 2020, be read a first, second, and third time and passed. Moved by Conseiller Larin, seconded by Councillor Sossier. You guys are okay with that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. It's on the floor. All those in favor? Yes. We. Yeah. Yes. 
Perfect. Thank you very much. Confirming bylaws carry. Our next regular public meeting of council will be held on Monday, May 4th, 2020. And we are adjourned at 8.40 p.m. Thank you very Thank you. much, everyone. Thank you. Have a great evening. Stay sane. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. <laughs>